Hello, and welcome to Cut It With A Hammer. Today is the fourth episode of my, on my Road to the Slider series, Out With The Old and In With The New. So we're just going to do a little walk around with the saw today, and in a future video I will do a more in-depth review of everything. So let's get started. So we'll start over here. Uh, down here is the electrical select section of the, uh, the saw. It has a off position. Turn it all the way over here to get the saw blade. This section right here is the shaper. And if you go back this way, you can get the shaper motor to run in the opposite direction, which is something I didn't think I would get being a North American saw. Uh, this allows you to use your shaper, uh, back feeding through your shaper. I'm not done any of that yet. So we'll just have to see how that works in the future. Uh, power on, power off. Uh, this is a magnetic switch, so it's not uh, something you're going to turn on without power. So this is the uh, height adjustment wheel for raising and lowering the blade. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. This down here is the bracket for the Move the saw around. Oops. Uh, not that I plan on moving it very often, but it is very heavy, so you need something. Uh, up here is the table is um, 40 inches deep, I believe. I'd have to double check that. Um, it is 32 inches wide on the top here. The fence moving very smoothly. There's a wheel under the this fence right here, and it moves fairly smoothly. There's a little bit of a joint here because this is a, a four-inch metal top, and this is cast iron. Uh, this is a very heavy metal bar. It's very sturdy. It's pretty solid. Um, the measuring strip along here I'm gonna come up quick, quick, is uh, measures the distance of the fence. From the blade, it's adjusted by a little screw down here, so you can adjust it, make fine adjustments, and tighten it down, which I've already done. It came pretty close from the factory, but it needs some adjustment. This locks the fence into place. It is very sturdy. You can adjust the fence so you can bring it out like this. So when you're doing a rip cut, your fence doesn't trap the wood next to the blade when you're doing a rip cut. So this is uh, typically the way you use the rip fence. You can also put it for low if you're doing angle cuts or thin pieces of wood. You can also do a high fence. And this would be more what you would see in a North American table saw. Um, this is a fine adjustment knob, so you can make fine adjustments. Um, the way you line it up is to just look down the fence to the gauge. It's not the best. It's, I would prefer to have a sight glass, but it's okay for this one. But if you want it completely out of the way, on this, you just tip it up and turn it over. So there it's completely out of the way. I don't stand here in front of this part of the table very much. Going over here, this is the uh, light protector and dust collection. Um, on the fancier models, it's, this is going to be two separate pieces, but on the entry level models, it's the same. And if you need to take this off, it comes right off. And then I just hang it up here on the wall. Push stick also came with a saw, but I don't use it. The saw blade goes all the way up. You can get with a 315 millimeter blade, you can get a full four inch cut. So the best part, of course, and what makes this a sliding table saw is the sliding table. So it goes all the way back. This is a six and a half foot table, so I can get a full, pretty much a full six and a half foot cut. If I push this all the way to the end and run my board all the way to here, that's almost six and a half inches. So 
wiping around the table. And a piece of wood all the way. Pass this on. It does come with a locking. So the table will lock in this particular position. Handle for holding up for controlling the table from this end. The outrigger and the outrigger support. This is where I do most of your cuts is from here. It's called the, I hold a piece of wood up against the fence as opposed to, and push all of it through the blade as opposed to putting the wood on the other side like a normal like a North American saw and have to hold the piece of wood to the fence and to push at the same time. It's a little more cumbersome, but we'll talk about that in another video. Over here is the blade cut mechanism. See it takes the play fairly quickly and it was much easier than on my old table saw. Emergency stop. This is more if you're using the shaper because the shaper is right here. So this is handy so you don't have to go all the way around. Turn it up over here. And, um, we go around on the other side. The, uh, this particular model comes with a and adjust the angle of the miter and there's some positive stops every five degrees and at 22 and a half from zero to 45 degrees. Uh, I've done a couple of test cuts and it's pretty spot on. It came adjusted from the factory. You can have the miter bar either at the back or at the front. And the dangle will go this way if you have it at the front. And there's stops for that too. Um, the stop along the miter bar, which goes out to about 50 inches for a cut and it's fairly accurate. It came that way from the factory, although I can adjust it if it needs to be with a screw right here, adjust, adjust the tape. So we're going to talk about, this was extra, this is an outfit feet table. Uh, I got it mostly because the shaper is right near this end, so I wanted some support on the outfeed of the stuff coming off the shaper. Uh, on this table saw, the blade is a lot more towards the front of the table, and the table is wider, so only pieces that are all, like four feet and longer will fall off, would fall off if this one's here, but even with this here, you can get a pretty long piece off of it. Um, this is the power feeder I got as an addition to the saw. Rather heavy, so theoretically, you're supposed to be able to do this and flip it down, but this whole unit is probably 175 pounds, so I'm probably not going to do that. If I need to do it, I'll probably take the power feeder off and then just flip what's left down. But we'll experiment with that in the future. Um, to change the blade, you just slide this door out of the way. And you just pull, unscrew this bolt right here, and the blade comes completely off. You can adjust the riving knife for various size blades. And then, if you're using a smaller, smaller blade, you can also use the scoring blade, which I will show you in another video. Um, there is a, this is a three-position interlock. When I first got the saw, I didn't realize it was three positions. I thought it was just this one and this one. Because this opens, lets you open this door. And this one lets you open the door down here for the uh, access to shaper adjustments. And for a long time, I first tried to turn on the saw, it wouldn't come on. And I ended up finally figuring out that this has to be in the middle. And that's how. There's a lot of safety features on this being a European saw. And then scrunch down here. Uh, 
descriptions. This is how you adjust the speed of the shaper by adjusting the pulley, similar to what you would find on a drill press. And then you would replace and you would adjust the belts down here. Um, this is the height adjustment on the shaper. So, and I have a couple of shaper heads that I will show you in another video. But basically, you would unscrew this, put your shaper head on, and I think we're going to cut it there. As I post putting the video together, it ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be because I added some more stuff about the shaper. So I'm going to stop here and we'll see you in the next video where I will talk more about the shaper and then we'll get on with uh, making projects. So please like, subscribe, ask any questions you want down below and we'll see you in the next video.